What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to break down and analyze some of the technical details and highlights of Ilya Topuria's performance against Bryce Mitchell at UFC 282, as well as some of the potential holes in his game that higher ranked opponents may be able to exploit in the future. Now overall, it was a great performance by Ilya and he's extremely well-rounded and he looked like an absolute world beater in this fight, but I think it's important to get a little bit nitpicky and see if there's anything we can find when talking about these potential future title contenders. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into this one. The main narrative behind this fight was can Bryce Mitchell get Ilya Topuria down to the ground or can Ilya keep it standing and land the knockout? Now to address this, Bryce with his typical style was coming out looking for the takedown throughout the fight looking to set it up with kicks and strikes and things like that and Ilya was going to immediately deal with this by coming out with a low center of gravity stance he came out pretty crouched he was throwing body jabs uh, and there was a reason behind that which I'll get to get into here in a second but if we start to go through this here we can see that when Ilya came out right away you can see him starting to bend over here in this low stance he's already lower than Bryce is and that's you know again to anticipate that potential takedown and start to establish that low center of gravity now the other thing that Ilya was doing is as he was in this stance he would either faint stepping in to throw a jab or he would throw the body jab or he would step into faint to sh potentially shoot one of his own takedowns. Now, there was a few reasons behind this. Number one, by establishing the body jab early on, it starts to disrupt Bryce's timing and it also does damage to the body, obviously. But by fainting it, it also further confuses Bryce, so he doesn't know if the body jab is gonna come in or if there's a faint. Now, what he can also pair with that body jab in the same stance and in the same movement is a potential takedown. So when he steps in and changes levels, Bryce isn't sure if it's a, is it a takedown attempt or is it a body jab? So already Bryce is going to have to start thinking about a few different things off the bat here and it's disrupting his own timing and his own rhythm of shooting takedowns when he wants to. So as they continue on in the first few seconds, you can see Ilya already kind of sticking that jab out there. Bryce moves back, you know, anticipating what Ilya is doing here. And you can see Ilya stepping in pretty far. I mean, look at their foot position there and their feet are right next to each other. Again here as Bryce steps in to throw his own body kick, Ilya responds with a body jab and they both glance each other a little bit but mainly miss but you can start to see the intention here of both guys Ilya wants to throw that body jab and potentially feint his own takedowns and Bryce wants to start to set up the takedown by throwing body kicks and different strikes at him to get him to think about those strikes instead of the takedown again they collide with the same exact intention in mind Ilya starts to change levels and extend that jabbing hand Bryce throws that body kick again and just both showing their intention again Ilya wants to go to the body with that jab. Bryce wants to go to the body with the kicks. Now, as they circle around here, you can see, again, Ilya fainting all the time here. He steps in, starts to drop his level a little bit, not too far, but as they continue to circle out, you'll see Ilya here drop even lower this time. See him kind of crouch there? You can see him start to sit down like he is either gonna sit down on a punch potentially or, you know, fake a level change. Now, as they circle out here, you can see Ilya start to faint level changes even more. So as Bryce circles out to his left, Ilya starts to step in and change levels a little bit. As Bryce goes even further here, you'll see Ilya dip even lower. So here Ilya steps in and starts to crouch and like sit down, like almost like he's sitting down on a punch or potentially changing levels for a takedown. And you can see Bryce respond by starting to sit down as well and change his own level. He's got Bryce thinking about different things here. Now Bryce responds by throwing another one of those body kicks up the middle but Ilya has his timing or he's starting to get a sense of his timing here because he counters off this kick with his own right hand over the top. And you can see that Bryce's left hand is down, his guard's low. So Ilya's gonna connect here, and throw his own combo that connects clean. And he follows it up with another right hand that sends Bryce back and gets Bryce thinking about his, his strategy here. You know, he's gotta think already about Ilya's potential level changing, the body jabs, and getting countered off those body kicks that he's clearly looking to use to set up takedowns and to start to get some strike momentum going to get Ilya thinking about his strikes. Now in this sequence, you can see the effectiveness of Ilya's stance and what he's really waiting for from Bryce. So Bryce is gonna fake a takedown here, changes levels and feints the takedown, and look what Ilya does. Immediately shoots his hips back, bends his torso over, getting ready to sprawl in case that takedown actually came through. So this is largely what Ilya's stance is functioning as. He's waiting for that incoming shot so he can be ready to sprawl immediately. So fast forwarding about 20 seconds here, we can see that Bryce shoots a takedown here and he shoots it naked, meaning he's not setting it up with any strikes beforehand. He's just looking to close the distance and shoot in on that lead leg on Ilya. So you can see here though that this is gonna be easy for Ilya to defend 
because it's not set up with any strikes. You can see it coming, it's telegraphed. And Ilya's stance is gonna come into play here as well. He has that lead hand fairly low because of his, his low center of gravity. So when Bryce shoots in, that you can see that left hand drop already to start down blocking and to prevent this takedown and to begin sprawling. And he just completely kills this attempt here. And you also see him kind of go off at an angle here. He kind of goes off at a perpendicular angle. Uh, he'll actually do it in a more severe way later. But you can start to see here that he's taking like this T angle, this perpendicular angle, which later you're going to see it's going to it's going to have Bryce's driving power go past him as Ilya is over here and wants to circle out this way. So he's not going to sprawl directly straight back in the in the same line as Bryce uh, because that can allow Bryce to potentially recover the takedown and continue driving him towards the fence. So by cut, by cutting off at this perpendicular angle, he's more likely to stop the shot and to gain leverage on the takedown to break it up. So as we continue on here, Bryce pulls back and tries to counter with a hook, but Ilya's too low and Ilya backs out. Bryce pursues him with a kick and decides to pull back from that. Now as the round went on, you could really see Ilya start to ramp up these feints even more. So in the sequence you'll see here, he ducks down, Bryce starts to step back. As Bryce comes back in, Ilya dips down again, level change. What does Bryce do? Look, you can see him step back right away. He's got him thinking about other things other than going forward and shooting his own takedown. He changes levels, Bryce moves back. Ilya's gonna do it again, level change. What does Bryce do? Look at that. Watch, look at Bryce's foot, his left foot. Steps back. It's, it's small, but it's indicating obviously that he's going backwards, not forwards. And that's what these feints are intended to do. Now again, Ilya's gonna step in. He steps into range, could be a body jab, could be a takedown. What does Bryce do? Moves backwards. So just with the feints alone, I mean, you can see the power of feints here, that Ilya's got Bryce moving backwards and not thinking about his own forward pressuring strategy that Bryce wants to implement. So Bryce tries something different here, and he's gonna try to set the takedown up with strikes and initiate the clinch with the upper body instead of just shooting on the legs with nothing setting it up. So Bryce steps in here, he's gonna throw some strikes, and he tries to clinch the upper body, but Ilya detects this coming in. Obviously, they've got contact. Ilya pushes him away and breaks this up right away. But we can see Bryce trying to adapt here with a different strategy. You know, that, that naked takedown, it's tough. It's tough to land shots like that from in cover distance quickly and land the takedown, you know, unless you're GSP and can rocket across the octagon at 100 miles an hour and cover all that distance very quickly. Otherwise, it's tough. It's telegraph. The opponent's most likely to stop it versus obviously setting it up with strikes to distract them and to cover up the incoming shot. So Bryce has the right idea here, but Ilya's defense is still too good, at least for now. So fast forwarding about 30 seconds into the fight, you'll see Bryce here try to come in and initiate the clinch with strikes again. But the mistake here is that he's coming in head on and Ilya is going to make him pay with a right hand here. You'll see it connect. You'll also see this later in round two, uh, which I'll get to when we get there, obviously. But the thing I want to point out here is why Bryce is doing this. Why is Bryce coming in on the center line? And by the center line, what I mean is coming in just straight on here in a straight line versus coming in at an angle over here, you know, trying to circle out and trying to get an angle on Ilya. Why is he coming in straight on? And the reason for that is if he comes in straight on, typically if you can get your opponent to square up and catch him head on, it's more you're more likely to get the takedown. It's harder to get the takedown if Ilya is cutting an angle off to the side like we saw earlier when he started to sprawl and cut that perpendicular angle. So if Bryce can catch him straight on and get his hips squared up, it's gonna be more likely that he lands the takedown. So with that in mind, Bryce looks to enter the clinch here by throwing strikes, hopefully clinch up and possibly get a takedown. But the problem is that Ilya meets him with his right hand and that's what Ilya is gonna do throughout this fight. He lands it a couple times. But you'll see Bryce step in here. He's looking to initiate that clinch because he's closing so much distance here but bam he runs into that right hand and it sends him off to the side and then a left hook follows up with it and now he's now he's stunned with his hips squared up you know ideally Bryce would want Ilya to be in this position but instead he's in this position because he's eating strikes if Ilya's hips were like this and he was thrown off balance like this this would make for you know an easy takedown you know if this was Ilya obviously this is Bryce but you know he ends up in the position that he was trying to get Ilya in instead because of that right hand counter straight down the pipe and you can see Ilya here pull back after that and that just ruined that entire attempt at closing the distance by Bryce. Now fast forwarding another 30 seconds, you'll look to see Bryce shoot another naked takedown. He doesn't set it up with strikes at all. He just looks to try to cover distance and there's a big gap in between them. So this is, you know, again, a very hard shot to land. It's a very hard takedown to hit. So he shoots in here, 
ducks down and again because of Ilya's low stance look look how low Ilya already is before this shot even begins he's already in this crouch stance and he starts to change levels himself so when and something I want to point out here they simultaneously changed levels so Bryce was looking for this takedown and I don't think he anticipated Ilya to change levels like this because look watch what happens when they both do it at the exact same time Ilya starts to change levels as Bryce is already in motion here. You can already see, you know, he's a blur. <laughs> he's already in motion and they're both changing levels at the same time. So not only does Bryce have to cover all that distance, now he's got to deal with Ilya already changing levels when he happened to shoot. So I think it was just more of a coincidence of timing here, um, but it also could be Ilya's reaction. I mean, this is an insanely fast reaction, but it, it could be possible. But obviously, you know, I don't know Ilya's perception and what he's seeing, but it, it looks so fast that it looks more like coincidence than intentional. But by the time he gets here, this, this is clearly intentional. You can see him uh, catching this sprawl here with the down block. And again, he's cutting off at this perpendicular angle. So here you can see he's off to the side here with that T angle. And it's just gonna have Bryce's driving force go past Ilya rather than into him. You know, if Ilya was over here and having to deal with this sprawl head on, it would give Bryce a better chance of continuing to drive towards the fence and potentially finishing that takedown. But by ending up over here at this angle, I mean, you can see like where Bryce's hand is at and uh, he's just heading, he's heading the wrong way, essentially. So Ilya continues to break this one up. Bryce has got to back out. He, I mean, he, look how look how low Ilya gets here. I mean, he's all the way down on the ground. There is no way of potentially recovering this takedown. And, you know, they have to square back up again. Now, again, looking at that in slow motion, frame by frame, if Ilya's reaction time is that quick to where he started to change levels as soon as Bryce did, man, this guy's got some godlike reaction time. <laughs> that's, that's just incredible. But regardless of reaction time, Ilya being in that low stance is making the defense of these shots a lot easier. And Bryce not setting it up with strikes is telegraphing it from further away, allowing Ilya to react to it even faster. Now, again, continuing the same story about 30 seconds later, Bryce is going to get a successful shot here or, or almost successful. What I mean by successful is that he's going to get in on the leg, but he's not going to be able to fully finish and control the shot. So here they get pretty close to each other. Bryce is going to shoot a naked shot again. No, no strikes setting it up. And he gets in on this leg here. Now he's able to turn Ilya around and start driving him towards the fence. And he's gonna look to try to wrap this arm around for the double, as you can see here. You can see him start to transition from the single leg to the double. He's looking to get both legs to hopefully get him down. But look at Ilya's hips. You see how they shift right away, how he turns his hip? And that's gonna, uh, it's, that's gonna give him more space to start fighting this arm on the inside here. It's gonna open this up. If he left his hips squared up, it would allow it would allow Bryce to have a better chance at getting him down. So by turning this way, he's automatically providing himself with a more advantageous angle to start fighting this takedown attempt by Bryce. So as Bryce comes in here, you're gonna see Ilya start to snake that left hand on the inside of the bicep there to start to interrupt that hand connection. He's not gonna allow Bryce to connect his hands. If he connects his hands behind his legs, the chances of getting that takedown go up dramatically. So he's starting to two on one this arm actually. You'll see both hands on that same arm. He's got one around the tricep there, around the bicep tricep area. And he's got the second arm on the inside there, which is creating space and making it harder for Bryce to connect his hands. And you can see that Bryce here has already abandoned connecting that second hand around the back. It's, it's, it's no longer here anymore. He's back to the single leg here. You can see his hand um, where, where it's going here on the inside like this. So he's already abandoned the double leg because of this two-on-one configuration by Ilya. And he's going back to that single leg, which is gonna be a lot harder to get. And here you can see a better look at what Ilya's doing. He's grabbing that tricep and he's, and he's pushing that right arm on the inside to create even more space which is going to make, make it harder for Bryce to make a clean connection he wants you know he wants to eliminate as much space as he possibly can and to get as tight as he can on that leg to get the takedown now Bryce is going to try to respond to this by turning Ilya out away from the fence and trying to trip him you'll see him try to, you'll see him start to step in here and look to try to get his foot behind him to trip him which actually works it, it knocks Ilya off balance but Ilya looks to grab under his leg to try to cradle his leg for balance and to potentially roll him over the top you can see him here underneath his leg and he's trying to push bryce past him or roll him over the top so Ilya's is going to get to a point of no return here where bryce is driving into him he knows he's losing the position here so he needs to let go in order to scramble so as bryce continues to drive through with this Ilya's is going to let go he's going to allow he's going to post his arm behind him so he doesn't go all the way flat 
and Bryce doesn't have full control over his body here. You know, he's only got that one leg. He doesn't have any upper body control. He doesn't have any underhooks or anything like that. So it's gonna allow Ilya to post off the mat here and to get that, that leg out there. You can see that he's getting that leg, that right leg out underneath him for driving force to stand up and to fight this takedown. And, you know, typically in these takedown battles, you might've you might have heard DC talk about this with commentary before, you know, whoever gets their head highest in the scramble typically will win that scramble. So here, you know, by not only getting his head higher, but his entire body position higher, you know, he's at a much greater chance of uh, defending this takedown than he, than he was before. And as they drive into the fence here, he starts to get that overhook. And you can see that he also starts to get wrist control here from the other angle. So, you know, things are just getting tougher here for Bryce. And another thing to notice here is that Ilya's foot is on the outside here. He's kicked it to the outside, which is part of the single leg defense. Bryce, on average, would, would like that foot to be in between his legs. When Ilya is able to kick that foot to the outside, it helps him defend the single leg takedown. And you'll see that Ilya takes his foot on the outside of Bryce's leg, and he's gonna stomp it to the ground, which is gonna give him more stability and more space in between them to start to push down on those hands. And you can see he's got like a two on one grip on that wrist and that's going to allow him to start to push Bryce away with that inside bicep tie, push that arm away. Bryce starts to switch now to an overhook instead. Ilya circling out with that underhook and he's, you know, fully broken up the takedown attempt at this point and they circle out. So a really good sequence there. It was a good takedown attempt by Bryce. Even with the naked shot, he got pretty deep on it. He just wasn't able to finish it and great takedown defense by Ilya. He was able to think quickly and adapt and start to snake both those hands on the inside to break up the initial single leg attempt and then think quickly as he started to go to the ground in order to scramble and reverse that and get higher body position in order to defend the takedown, kick that leg to the outside, start to get wrist control, push down, eventually swim the underhook in and break up that entire sequence. Now, one of the things I want to highlight here real quick is Ilya's head movement throughout this round because I've mainly been focusing on the grappling because that was kind of the main narrative in this fight. Can Ilya stop Mitchell's grappling, you know, and take over in the striking? So in, in this sequence here, you can see that Ilya is always moving his head side to side off that center line. And he also circles out a lot. So that, that combination is obviously very good at preventing Bryce from setting up strikes. It makes it a lot harder. So you'll see here his head's off the center line now the other way. Bryce looks to throw a jab and he's back off to the right. And now his head's over on the left. Now he's back to the center, but then he's moving off to the right a little bit. And then he steps in and the head's off to the left. You know, it's hard to do his head movement justice here with these with the still frames and going through it frame by frame like this. But if you watch the fight again, pay attention to his head movement. He's good at getting off the center line and, you know, continuously moving and shifting his head position to make himself harder to hit. Now, in this particular sequence, it's going to work against him a little bit because Bryce is going to go back to setting up takedowns with the strikes. So as he goes into as he goes to step in here, he has good head movement. Bryce lands a little bit of a jab there, but as he moves his head to the right here to try to roll with this right hand, it's gonna allow Bryce to step in at the same time as he's recovering from that head movement to come back up. And it allows Bryce to, to get deep on that single leg. And that's where he got that takedown that allowed him to uh, ride out the, the, rest of the rest of the round from that top position and guard. So let me just go back here to how we set it up again one more time. Ilya's got that head movement. Bryce throws that right hand. He rolls with the punch like he should. He takes the sting out of that right hand, but it allows Mitchell to close the distance and get deep in on a shot like he's been looking to do all fight. So that was clearly the path for, for Mitchell to get takedowns in this fight was to set it up with strikes first. And in this particular case, the head movement worked against Ilya in that, in that regard. Now, the last minute of round one ended with Mitchell in the top of guard. Not a lot to talk about there. Ilya was able to keep him in closed guard and tie up his wrist and things like that. So... Not, not a lot of action there. So moving on to round two here, as soon as they start, as soon as they started round two here, Mitchell came in on that center line again, and that right hand counter that I was talking about came into play. So he gets, he gets hit by a jab here right away. So Mitchell looks to fake the takedown head on here, and then he's going to come back up on the center line, but Ilya is going to counter with that right hand and he just lands it flush, just a nasty shot and a left hook to follow it up. And that gets Bryce thinking twice again about coming in on that center line. Now, fast forwarding a little bit, old habits die hard. And we can see that Bryce goes back to shooting the takedowns naked again. He doesn't set this one up with strikes. And because of that, what does Ilya do? Down blocks, sprawl, and immediately starts to cut that angle off to the side again. So perfect, working from that perpendicular angle. Uh, he's pushing on the head. He's going to drop his hips here, which is going to further kill this takedown and allow him to pull up on Bryce's tricep there and to kill some of the leverage while also pushing away from him on the other side. And you can see Bryce's grip is breaking 
and he's getting out of this takedown and you know cutting off to the side again always cutting that angle and as they come up he's going to eat some punches for it as well so again another failed takedown attempt for mitchell because he didn't set it up with strikes first now i mentioned before that Ilya likes to move his head a lot but he also likes to circle out a lot which makes the shot even harder it's harder for bryce to corner him and pin him down and you can see some of that circling here in this sequence Ilya's moving to the right continues circling right he stops the plant Bryce goes to throw a kick. Where does Ilya go? Now he's going back left, continues to circle out that way. And Bryce is just having a hard time pinning him down. He's always, he's always moving, he's always circling out. He's always moving his head around and he'll step in with feints to get Bryce to back up. So it's that combination of head movement that makes him hard to hit, circling in and out that makes him hard to pin down for the takedown, and then also the feints that gets him backing up. So you can see how this would be really tough for Bryce to try to pin Ilya down for those takedowns that he's looking for. Now fast forwarding, Bryce is going to look to shoot another takedown here without setting it up with strikes. And he's actually going to get it pretty, pretty close on this one. But the problem is, is that Ilya makes a pretty nice move here. And I want you to take note here of this arm on the inside it's going to block Mitchell's hand from shooting all the way in and connecting with this hand over here. So a really slick move there. You can see how he's blocking that arm from coming in. So not only is Bryce dealing with that sprawl, he's got to deal with that, that block right there, that inside bicep tie almost. It's like, a, it's, like an inside, it's like an inside bicep tie with his forearm, blocking his hand from coming in even deeper. And this just kills that takedown attempt again. Also look at Ilya circling out to that perpendicular angle again. Just great takedown defense here stuffing everything, getting wrist control, switching his hand to the neck there and pushing Bryce to the side and eventually escape. So again, great takedown defense by Ilya and another failed naked shot by Mitchell. So let's fast forward now to the knockdown. Mitchell here is gonna first throw a jab and that's gonna be the key to this knockdown. Ilya is gonna key off the timing of this jab. So the next time Mitchell throws it, he's gonna fire back with his own shots at counters. So Mitchell throws his jab here. Ilya ducks, kind of faints there as they start to circle out. Mitchell's going to faint the jab there a little bit. It gets Ilya to react. You'll see him kind of pull back. But now the next time Mitchell goes to throw this jab, look at, you can see Ilya already winding up. He starts to extend this jab and what comes in? Bam, big uppercut. It's hard to tell if it fully lands, but, but it seems like it does. And then that left hook comes over the top, grazes him, but the real nasty one is the right hand. Boom, hits him right in the chin and Bryce goes down. Now, once they're on the ground here, Ilya starts to threaten the guillotine. And the purpose of that is to get Bryce to think about something other than trying to come up on this takedown. You can see that Bryce is starting to grip around the legs here. And as we see with a lot of, you know, wrestling heavy fighters, when they're in trouble, they want to start to get that takedown and shoot. So by wrapping his neck up here, it's going to require Bryce to have to defend his neck if Ilya continues to chase this guillotine. So he wraps his neck up here. And as Bryce starts to fall back, which can be a defense to the guillotine, you know, if the person doesn't have mount, Ilya starts to let up on it a little bit. So Bryce doesn't have to fully fight the hands around his neck, but he's not thinking about coming up on that takedown anymore. Instead, he's on his back. He's trying to get half guard if he can, but he's, he's stuck in a pretty bad position here. He's basically cradled, heading into side control. Ilya hasn't fully passed yet because Bryce's knee is in the way, but obviously not a great position to be in. Now, Ilya's gonna let go of that guillotine type of arm position, that, that head wrap that he has with his arm, the headlock type of position. He's gonna start to move his arm out here and that allows Bryce to start shrimping in and to start curling up to hopefully get some type of underhook so he can maybe come up on a sweep, come up on a takedown, establish some type of guard, just something better than being stuck in side control. But the problem here is that Bryce is gonna wrap his, his hand underneath Ilya's leg. See this here? And you can see his other arm here looking for kind of the underhook around the waist. But, but the problem with that is that it leaves his head open. And if he doesn't stop this incoming cross face from Ilya, he's just gonna go right back down. And that's exactly what happens here. So Ilya's gonna get the cross face. And you know, if you, if you allow the person on top to get head control there, you're going right back down. The priority there is preventing that head control. And he wasn't able to do it because he's underhooking that leg. So he gets flattened out again. Now Bryce is gonna be able to get out from underneath this cross face. And he makes a good attempt here at curling up underneath him to hopefully get some type of sweep going, get some type of momentum to potentially knock Ilya over. And he, he starts to load Ilya's weight up on top of him, which would allow him to potentially roll him over. But you can see Ilya's hand go out and post for balance. So it really just sends Ilya up over the top, but not all the way, not enough to sweep him. Ilya is able to stop it with that posting hand that he has out, that right hand. Now Ilya is going to shift his hips here to the mat to get that weight off of Mitchell. 
Uh, you would think that Ilya would want his weight on Mitchell, but it's actually counterproductive here. Mitchell wants Ilya's body weight on top of him because it's kind of like loading a spring. If he can get Ilya's center of gravity on top of him, then maybe he can bridge and sweep him or roll him over. But if Ilya gets his hips off of Mitchell's center of gravity and off to the mat like he does here, now Mitchell just lost a lot of leverage. He's not able to load that weight up like a spring and instead the weight is on the side of him rather than being on you know, his center of gravity where his power is at, where his core is at and it was where his hips are at to get underneath that weight and generate power. It's now off to the side which completely screws that up. Now the other bad thing here is that Ilya gets this underhook here which is gonna allow him to come up and post on that right hand and turn Mitchell over to his back. So you can see here he rolls him over to his back and he's establishing control and that higher ground again. Now fast forwarding here a bit, Ilya goes a step over to the back to start to establish kind of a modified mount slash potential back take if, if Bryce rolls, but really he's looking to land ground and pound from this position. And you can see Ilya here with this wrist control on this far side, and that's gonna allow him to start landing some of this ground and pound here. But this is one of the potential flaws of, of Ilya's style I was going to talk about because you're going to see Bryce get away because of Ilya's intent to try to land damage here rather than control, look for submissions, hold the position, that type of thing. He's exciting to watch because he looks for the finish and he looks to land damage, but it can also work against him because it can allow the opponent to scramble and potentially escape. So as he lands this ground and pound and Bryce gets up to turtle, he's going to start to stand up and Ilya's looking to land those punches. But look, Bryce is also starting to gain higher ground. So Ilya wants to land those shots, but Bryce is starting to stand up. These shots suck, of course, but it's also giving Bryce the, the chance to get out. And eventually Bryce starts to work his way up to fight the hands, and he stands all the way up against the fence because Ilya was looking for that, that big ground and pound moment. And from there, Bryce is eventually able to get an underhook, turn things around, and escape the scenario. So all that happened because Ilya went for that more dominant position to land ground and pound, allowed Bryce to get to turtle, and he lost some control there while trying to go for that finish or you know land a lot of damage. So fast forwarding to the finish now, Bryce is gonna look for a takedown here by setting it up with kind of a strike attempt it's like a it's like a loose feint attempt but you know Bryce by now has taken a lot of brutal blows he's been you know failing some takedowns he's had to deal with the sprawl he's gotten some takedowns but all this is just a big energy dump you know he's had to fight up back to his feet while eating ground and pound so you know you can't really expect a lot here he kind of just throws this loose jab out there to hopefully get Ilya to react as he shoots down low but Ilya is able to start blocking, circling out again to that perpendicular position. Bryce is able to get a little more straight on with him and to hopefully get out of there, but Ilya is faster and is able to get that higher ground. You can see he's got that higher head position, higher body position. That's gonna allow him to win this scramble. And that's when you see that big monstrous, you know, muscle over moment, cause he's got that higher, that higher leverage point. He grabs Bryce here, he gets a over under position and he just dumps them over to his back because of that higher ground. Now, once they're on the ground here, Ilya would like to optimally pin this arm down and just land you know, his ground and pound that he's looking for that finish with the ground and pound. But Bryce is, Bryce is gonna be hard to pin down because he's a good grappler. So as he comes up to try to pin that arm down, Ilya instead goes to a neon belly position here with his, with his right leg. And it's gonna allow him to control Bryce on the ground while landing ground and pound. But really what it's gonna do is because it's such an uncomfortable position, mainly guys are gonna wanna get out of there and it's gonna initiate a scramble. And that scramble could allow the bottom guy to get out and get to a better position. But what will happen a lot of the time, especially if they're taking damage like this or they're tired, is it's gonna force the bottom guy to make a mistake and open up something. It's gonna cause a submission to open up. It's gonna cause a position advancement to open up. So you'll see here, he gets this neon belly position, Bryce looks to scramble out because it's just an awful position to be in. You obviously got the threat of the strikes. Having a knee in your gut doesn't feel great either. And he starts to turn in. But Ilya, again, has the higher ground. And he's the fresher fighter at this point who has taken less damage as well. So he's going to spin to the back here. And you can see Bryce is just kind of stuck in the same spot. It's getting tougher to even react and follow Ilya here, especially from that position. The guy on top is just going to be a lot faster spinning to the back than the guy on bottom, you know, looking to control a leg and to follow him. So continuing on here, Bryce looks to cover up. He starts to get up to higher ground, but Ilya is just too quick. He gets that hook in and Bryce gets just caught in a bad position here uh, where he just essentially gets stuck in an arm triangle as he comes up and as Ilya digs underneath him there. And that was just pretty much the beginning of the end. And he's just gonna muscle Bryce back over again. 
And there's one more detail here I'm gonna go over with the finish. So as they land here in this arm triangle position, Bryce's last hope is to hopefully hold Ilya in half guard, but you're gonna see Ilya shift his hips faster than Bryce can recover half guard. So look up near Ilya's hips slash where Bryce's legs are at. You'll start to see Ilya fall to this left hip because he's trying to get out of half guard and you can see Bryce's leg following him and he's trying to get that, that leg underneath to get to establish half guard. You can also see Bryce's hand right here pushing on the hip because if he can push on the hip and get Ilya to go backwards, it gives him a better chance of getting that half guard, which will allow him to potentially ride this arm triangle out and give him a better chance of escaping. But Ilya drops his hips all the way to the left here and you can see Bryce's leg continuing to follow him. Follow him. And as he drops his hip, he's gonna kick out his right leg. Ilya's right leg is gonna kick out. It's kind of hard to see here because that referee's arms in the way, but you can kind of see it there in between. His right leg is out now because of this falling motion. He falls to the left hip, kicks that leg out. That allows him to pass guard. And it's just over from there. Bryce is unable to follow him and get half guard. He's just stuck. He's exhausted. He's been beat up. Ilya's got that side position to finish that arm triangle. And that's the end of the fight. So obviously an amazing performance by Ilya, but what are some of the potential holes in his game? Now, one of the main things that I saw in this fight that concerned me a little bit is that Ilya was thrown with just absolute heat on every shot. He's looking to put a lot of power into every shot and that caused him to overextend when he would miss. So you can see here with Bryce, you know, he misses and it throws him way off balance. It could allow someone, you know, a different opponent to potentially connect here with him coming up, you know, with this, with this, this is a bad angle for, for Ilya. And this is a great angle for Bryce. You know, oh, I talk about perpendicular angles a lot and Bryce has the dominant angle here. And it's all because Ilya threw some really hard shots that missed. Now, a potential explanation for that is, is that he could just simply disrespect Bryce's striking. He may feel that he doesn't have enough power to affect him, so that blatant disrespect of striking just may make him want to just drop bombs and get him out of there more quickly. Or it could just be a habit in you know Ilya's style. He's got he's got a lot of knockouts. He hits really hard. He knows that he got he he knows that he has power in his hands. So he looks to land those big shots. Whatever it may be, it could be something that potential striking heavy opponents can exploit in the future. Another example of it here, you can see him throw a right hand. It goes over the top and it allows Bryce to almost get his back here. You know he gets this dominant angle. Ilya is able to circle into him, but look at the compromised position that he ends up in because of that big winding shot that missed. As Ilya came out of that position, Bryce hit him with some punches here and he was able to follow it up by landing a couple more strikes and a kick to the head there. So, you know, and that all came from throwing that one big looping right, that big power shot that missed. And another question I naturally have too is with that big powerful style, can he go five rounds? You know, what will a fight look like against a high volume striker that can drag him into deeper waters? And, you know, what happens if he doesn't land the big power shot? Will he have enough gas in the tank later on if he's trying to land these bombs? Or again, is he mainly throwing these heavy shots against fighters that he feels clearly superior to in the striking and you know and against a heavier volume type of fighter a high volume type of striker he may you know tone that down a bit and maybe maybe be able to play the volume game a little bit more himself a couple other things is that we saw takedown success from mitchell when he was able to enter with strikes so you know clearly if someone's able to enter with strikes and close the distance on him he is vulnerable to going down and once he was down in round one he didn't get back up now you know, he was just tying Mitchell up. There wasn't a lot of time left on the round, so it could mainly be because of that, but it is worth noting. Also, as I mentioned before, his tendency to favor damage and, you know, landing those big strikes on the ground allowed Mitchell to get back up. So, you know, in general, if he looks to land those big, powerful blows, it can land, you know, a lot of damage and score him the knockout or a TKO but it also may allow his opponent to get out and you know if he was if he got caught by shots later that would have lost him the fight luckily for Ilya, mitchell wasn't able to turn the fight around and Ilya got the got the submission himself but again it's one of those things worth noting here that Ilya tends to look for those big damaging moments and that allows guys you know openings to get out as much as it allows Ilya chances to end the fight lastly a few other details that i noticed is that mitchell was able to land some of those kicks up the middle sometimes and you know again a more dangerous striker may be able to capitalize on that also Ilya abandoned a few things in the fight that were working for him he actually threw a really really nasty leg kick at the beginning of the fight that knocked mitchell down but 
from my recollection, I don't think he threw another leg kick again the entire fight. Also, he had a really hard body, uh, right straight to the body. He was throwing a lot of jabs to the body, but he threw a, a really nasty body shot also. And actually, I can show you that right here. As Mitchell was circling here, Ilya followed him with a really nasty right to the body. You can see it just it bends Mitchell over, it has some nasty impact, and sent him back. But again, Ilya didn't really throw it again. So it's one of those things I've, I've noticed with other fighters in MMA, specifically with leg kicks more than anything. A lot of the time you'll see a lot of fighters throw leg kicks that are effective and then just abandon them. Jose Aldo with, you know, the legend that he is and all the greatness that he is, he would sometimes do this in fights as well. He would throw leg kicks that would clearly be damaging the opponent and then just kind of abandon it for the boxing. So it would, it would have been interesting to see Ilya continue to throw those leg kicks. I wonder how much of an effect it would have had on Mitchell's movement, and it might have really stymied his takedown attempts even earlier in the fight. So just another thing to keep note of, that Ilya can tend to stop throwing certain weapons and it may be just because he feels like he's more successful with other things but it is something to keep in mind that Ilya may not continue to use certain weapons even though they're working but anyway awesome performance by Ilya overall and also credit to Bryce for just being tough as nails he took some incredible shots in this fight never went out kept fighting all the way to the end and that dude is just tough as nails so respect to both of these guys let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments below and let me know what you would like to see next and I'll see you in the next one.